Making the Dragons is the fourth season to be shit out of Kazuki Takahashi's asshole. Wait, what? Oh, it's filler? Oh, that makes more sense. All right, all right, I'll redo the intro. Just, just cut that part out. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going to go now. <clears throat> Waking the Dragons is the fourth season of Yu-Gi-Oh! to be shit out of four kids' as executive asshole. I didn't think they could get any dumber with this show, but somehow they managed to. Who could have predicted a season where the pivotal characters are Rex Raptor and Weevil Underwood when they join a cult led by a heterochromic twink from Atlantis would have turned into a cluster fucking a total mess? I'm just gonna state now that I haven't seen the season since it aired back in, I think, 2005, so I didn't remember jack shit going into this. But everyone around me was telling me, oh, Oh man, this season is the worst season ever. It's so dumb and ridiculous. You're going to have a field day. And I have to say, I was a little let down at the beginning. For about the first half, at least, it was nothing really new. It was as dumb as the show has already set itself as, so I wasn't really shocked. But after the 50% mark, the show just falls into complete nonsense and you just make shit up as it goes along. And it's, it's a fucking mess and I love it. I actually kind of like this season. I guess this is the part where I talk about all the things that I liked about the show because for the rest of the video, I'm going to be complaining about it. I'm a huge sucker for anything that has a group of dragons as a pivotal plot point for the show. That's why I really like Arc 5, even though that show is a huge fucking mess. That's way worse than this. Don't worry about Arc 5. We'll eventually get to Arc 5. But yeah, I did think the idea of the dragons fusing with things was really cool, even if it did lead to a bunch of plot conveniences and saving the main characters because of plot armor and a lot of dumb shit later on. Neat concept. Poor execution. Moving on. Okay, and now I'm looking at my script, and I thought I had more to talk about of things that I like, but then I realize it's blank. So yeah, that's all I liked about this fucking season, if that tells you anything. Then I guess you won't mind if I challenge Yugi for a shot at those god cards. I'll never understand why they keep having characters like Rex and Weevil think that they could beat Yugi. Rex lost to Joey when he was first learning the fucking game, and Weevil couldn't beat Yugi when he was cheating and Yugi was using an arguably shittier deck. So how do they exactly expect to beat the god cards? Why is Grandpa washing the god cards like they're glass cups? They're pieces of paper. These cards have also been stated that they're the most powerful and devastating cards that have actually actual magical powers and you're trusting them to your grandfather who has in every situation either been overpowered or kidnapped. Wouldn't you want to keep them on you at all times? But I guess this is the same person that gave the Millennium Puzzle way back in season two when Ben and Keith asked him twice. So then the God cards get stolen by Johnny Bravo, Dan from Bakugan, and Akiza's sister? Brother? I don't know. Let's see. His alpha's got 1,400 attack points, plus 1,700 from his beta. Who let Joey start doing math? Guillermo's eyes start glowing red due to the seal of Orichalcos. I'm not really sure why they didn't do it from the start, because they establish later on that every time they activate the seal that everyone else's eyes turn immediately red. Hold on! You have six monsters! <laughs> That's cheating, pal! How come no one stopped Weevil when he had over 10 monsters on the field back in Season 2? Page 3 of the Duelist Handbook clearly states... This establishes that there's a handbook of rules in the game. I'm glad that no one seems to read or care about it unless plot convenience. How is he able to throw Obelix to Johnny Bravo when the seal stops anything from escaping and we see that it's not off the field yet? Give me a break! You nutty professor! After all that has happened to you, Tristan, you don't believe the professor. Why did that dragon make an eagle sound? Megan Hollingshed, the original voice actress for My Valentine, was replaced with Erica Schroeder for this season onward, which kind of sucks because I really enjoyed Megan Hollingshed's performance as Mai. She made the character for the English version. Not saying Erica Schroeder's performance is bad or anything, but it's just that it was a very iconic voice. We don't want to be trouble! You twerp should have thought about that before you landed on our street. Any ideas? Why exactly are we still following these morons? The key to beating this washed up has been is somewhere in my deck. I just have to keep picking cards till I find it. Man, only if I ran more than one copy in my entire deck. This trap card automatically puts an end to your attack before it's able to hit its target. Thank you. I would have never guessed what negate attack did if you didn't explain it to me. It's right up there with what Pot Agree does, because I still don't fucking know to this day. But those toon monsters can't be destroyed by blue eyes! Seto! He just explained that he was attacking in order to draw cards. I guess at this point no one listens to each other because they're so sick of hearing everyone explain their cards they just fucking block it out. I never doubted you for a second! Uh, except when you did three seconds ago. Punch Buggy Green, no backsies! Ow! There's not a car around for miles! Oops, my bad. Kristen doesn't respect women! <laughs> 
Ricky! Where are you, pal? They took him! They got my brother! Mikey. Oh no, they captured Mikey. Oh man, the first villain that doesn't have a stupid contrived motive. Maybe this show isn't as hopeless as I thought it was. They sometimes forget to have the seal Lori Calcos on Alistair's forehead throughout this duel. Card of Demise! This lets me draw three cards! So Card of Demise in this season only lets you draw three cards like it does in real life instead of the five like it did last season. Watch out, those are some serious paper cuts. Wait a sec, Yugi! Duke instantly knew it was Yugi because he saw a card on the ground. But in this world, Duel Monsters is basically a regular sport and a natural day event. So the odds of seeing a card on the ground isn't very surprising. I think my biggest issue with Mai's character arc this season is that they're trying to present her with two different reasons for joining the Ori Kalkos. One is that she feels lonely and isolated that she's a outcast, even though she's had multiple opportunities to join the group. And this issue was pretty much settled last season when she overcame that after Joey saved her. And then there is the trauma of being trapped in the shadow realm and join the Ori Kalkos to become a stronger person and to overcome her past traumas and to be able to get internal peace because she feels that these events are holding her back and weighing her down, which is a more viable motive, but you can't cherry pick which issue you want to use as her motivation when the scene demands it. At some points, they use the I am a loner reason for joining the Ori Kalkos and others is to become a stronger person because she can't get over her trauma of being trapped in the shadow realm. You could possibly make an argument that these issues go hand in hand with each other, because they show scenes of her fearing she's being left behind by Joe and the others when trapped in the Shadow Realm, but these scenes are very few and far between and don't really paint the picture. If they used nothing but this instead of flip-flopping between each issue, then I probably would have bought this more and wouldn't have had this issue to begin with. I really hate how the seal is layered above Mai's hair, like her hair is fucking transparent. It's the same thing where in every anime character now, the eyebrows are above their hair. That's not how things work. It looks so much better when it's just like this. This fragment of the Ori Kalkos stone! Could they not have done another take of him saying the Ori Kalkos? Balan, <laughs> what are you doing? I feel like this episode was made by two separate teams. Half the time the characters look like they're good and drawn on model, and then the other half they look like they're melting. That's a real nice overlay of the map you got there. Did you take that off Google Earth? Uh, that's not how gravity works. Why is he floating upwards while they're going down? Shocking to no one is that four kids changed Raphael's backstory. In this version, his family survives and forgets about him, but in the original version, they actually die and his relatives take all the inheritance and abandon him, leaving him a very bitter person. This really raises the question of what are dual monster cards made of? You are able to rip them like Kaiba did in the beginning of the show when he ripped the fourth blue eyes in existence, but they don't become ruined when they fall into water. They're clearly bendable, like when everyone draws their cards, but they stick onto the dual disc, kind of like magnets. After spending three long years on that island, I finally got my answer. How did you not notice that island? You were stranded there for three whole years! I really like how Raphael starts his philosophy monologue by calling the Pharaoh evil, but never gives any explanation why, other than, You're evil, Pharaoh. I have to kill you to save the Earth. Meet the six Karibo brothers, Kariba, Karibe, Karibo, Karibi, Karibu, and Clyde. Whoa, I didn't see that coming. Yugi always pulls the card he needs at the last second. Man, this show is just self-aware enough to really get on my fucking nerves. I've sealed your dragon in a crystal prison, just like he was when you first found him. How did he know that Tamias was locked in ice? What have I done? I'm really glad that he regretted activating it instantaneously. Oh no! The seal of Orikalkos is in play! So the monsters on the field are real! But it was okay when he sacrificed Dark Magician? Mm-mm-mm, Yugi thinking with his dick again. I've gotta get in there! Where's Catapult Turtle on his dual disc? You can see the monster in frame. 
Raphael's whole philosophy about everyone being evil and claiming the Pharaoh is too is nothing more than a self-fulfilling prophecy. He puts the Pharaoh into a situation where he has no other choice than to activate the seal of Ori Kalkos. Also, the seal has been stated to be a corrupting, evil, dark magic that steals people's souls. Man, you sure showed the Pharaoh when he became controlled by the seal. Next victims are your big shield gardener, Gazelle, and Pepsi Man! Of all the decks that Yami could fucking lose to, he loses to Guardians. I break the seal! Why didn't Yugi do this earlier instead of just crying like a baby? Yugi gave his Duel Monsters Championship crown to some nobody? Kaiba says he gave the championship crown to some nobody. But the tournament has been over. How could he have given up the title if it wasn't at a sanctioned event? Was that an anime Scrooge sound? Now that he's infused with the power of the Ori Calcos, he seems unstoppable. Man, it's really unfortunate that Joey's the only one with spell destruction cards in its deck. When did Joey get Red Eyes back? Was it after the rematch of Yugi and Joey that they hyped up in Season 3? Only for the last episode to be a recap of the whole season, cutting it off right before the duel. Blue balling us harder than the main character in Amano Megami, Wasuki Darake. Before these flashbacks, they framed Rex and Weevil as guys who didn't exactly like each other. The season even starts with them accidentally running into one another. But now they frame them as best friends, or the equivalent of two narcissists feeling their own clout together. You know, for a filler season, they actually gave gave Rex and Weevil interesting character traits and then made them actually feel like characters instead of what they've been this whole time, which was one noted plot devices when they were useful and then cast aside when they weren't. I feel like this is an underused thing that they talk about, how Weevil and Rex can't come to terms with losing their own popularity and becoming has-beens and hacks and, you know, washed up. If this was in a better written show or, you know, not Yu-Gi-Oh, this would have been an interesting idea to build upon. But, you know, after this, this is never brought up again, but then they're back to being comedic relief. Now, every card in the game of Duel Monsters has a story behind it, and this is one of my favorite tales. There once was a swordman who was so powerful, everyone died. The end. For no other reason other than to act like a girl in a middle school relationship, Tamias then refuses to fuse with Poison Butterfly. And here I was excited for an Eldritch Horror Dragon. <sighs> Guess we can never have nice things. The famous draw monster scene where Yami destroys Weevil was actually cut down from 7 attacks to 5 in the English version. Alright kids, get your memes out there now. Everyone's gonna be drawing monster cards. In the original version, Taya asks Ironheart if he found Weevil's body. He tells them that he gave him to some other people and they were sent to a nearby hospital. In the dub, Ironheart says that they never found anybody besides Taya and Yami. This creates a plot hole in the dub when Weevil wakes up right next to Rex in the hospital at the end of the season. Ever notice how Yami and Yugi's jackets are different colors? If you really want to overanalyze it, Yami's is darker because he is a more morally ambiguous character, at least in the Japanese version. And Yugi's jacket is lighter because he is such a kind-hearted, good-spirited person. What if I promise to buy you a pepperoni pizza when we reach civilization? Uh, pepperoni? Did somebody say pizza? Oh, pizza! I love pizza every morning. We love pizza. Every day. How was Valen able to get in front to be able to drive against Mai? Also, wasn't his arm in a sling a previous scene? How was he able to drive a motorcycle? Please fasten your seatbelt. Just to be safe. <laughs> I don't get what's so funny. It's a private party now. <laughs> I know that voice. Me too. You didn't recognize his voice the first time last episode? I kind of fell asleep during this duel, but all that really happens is Alistair uses his toy soldier deck to guilt trip Kaiba, but he's too above that and doesn't give a shit and goes, I'm not responsible for this. Bleh. Another lovely continuity error is that Tristan is talking to Rebecca when they're in the sewer, even though you saw him in the previous scene running from the controlled cops with Taya. Nice work, Rebecca. Yeah. On three, Taya. Three! For some reason, in the English version, they decided to give Valen a Cockney accent. Most people apparently thought this was an Australian accent, when in fact he's supposed to be British. Surprising to nobody that they completely reworked Valen's backstory. In the English version, he has grown up in 13 juvenile detention centers. 
cutting out scenes like him taking refuge in a church and becoming close with a nun there, later for punks to then burn it down and him to where they imply either beating them to death or beating them very badly to the point where he is imprisoned. And that's when he meets darts. Up until this point of the season, I really wasn't sure where everyone was complaining about how stupid this season gets. For me, this was nothing really new, considering I've watched all the previous three seasons and thought, eh, it's as stupid as it's always been. But then this duel happened. Oh, trap buster armor should clear things up. He says it's a trap card, but you can clearly see that he's placing a monster on the duel disc. Also, how is he activating a trap card directly from his hand? What? That helmet thing already went to the graveyard. Wow. He runs more than one of his best cards in his deck? What an unthinkable strategy, Joey. I feel like it was somewhat of a missed opportunity to instead have Alistair have the armor deck instead of Valen. It would have been a nice hero motif because his brother always talked about Dinah Dude coming to save them, which sadly never happened, and in the end, Mikey was killed on the battlefield by a tank. Or captured in the English version, my bad. It's a great thing that Joey was able to revamp his entire deck before this duel to have everything that he'd ever need in any situation against Valen's deck. Like his own super mecha suit that has never been brought up before and will never be brought up again. Oh, that's cool. Now this duel has pretty much become a Saint Seiya episode, where the quote-unquote duel is an excuse for Joey and Valen to beat the shit out of each other. The Lord of Red is pretty cool. It would have been nice if he ever used it more than just this time. So let me get this straight. Valen punched Joey so hard that the Lord of Red became Red-Eyes Black Dragon again. Way to ruin a scene with that sound effect. It's like having a fart sound and lowering someone's coffin into their grave. This duel also kind of reminds me of that GX episode where the Dark Scorpions summon themselves and then beat the shit out of Chaz. It's time to activate Big Bang Dragon Blow's special effect! I also really like how Joey now knows all of his new monster's effects when fused with the Claw of Hair Mouse, even though he didn't know how the magical hammer worked when he used it for the first time when dueling my. Players have to draw until we each have six cards in our hand. So that means you draw two, Brainiac. Fine. Mai tells him to draw two cards, yet he draws four. Is this considered cannibalism? Where has this mystical space typhoon been in Yugi's deck every time he's needed it, though? I love how Raphael holds darts on such a pedestal. Even though in every interaction we've been shown, darts treats him like a piece of shit. Maybe Raphael's a masochist. Another thing the Seal of Orichalcos does that they only use when it's convenient for the villain to be winning, since it increases the field size to 10 monsters, it allows them to have a front row and a back row. So in order to destroy the backline monsters, you have to destroy the frontline monsters. Except the fact that this Harley is ever brought up and is only used exactly twice, I believe. It must be a glitch in the hologram. It's really getting old after everything up until this point. They keep writing Kaiba as not believing in this hocus pocus magic. From what I've been told in the sub version, it's not that he doesn't believe in all of it. It's just that he doesn't give a shit. All that's important to him is beating Yugi and reclaiming his title as the best. What? <laughs> he turned her into a fucking pigeon! Holy shit, we're fully off the fucking rails now. Next you're gonna tell me Tay is a useful character. <laughs> ah, that'll never fucking happen! Ah. Hello? Who's there? Who else would fucking be here? We have now reached the duel with darts, and we have hit new heights of dumb. So let's list off everything that the Seal of Ori Calcos can do now for darts, because apparently it has a million fucking effects that no one else knows, because only darts has this special Seal of Ori Calcos Deuteros. Well, every turn I get 3,000 life points, and I get to summon 20 monsters, and I can do 10 backflips, and shoot lasers it from my eyes. His monster would have to be destroyed seven more times before it could defeat my dragon. Yami says Ori Kalkos Gigas would have to come back seven times in order for it to be strong enough to kill the Dragon Master Knight. But that means it would only have 4,900 attack and couldn't destroy it because it has 5,000. I guess Yugi was the one doing all the math for them. I think I'll activate my card of demise! This lets me draw five new cards! So card of demise now has its original effect from the show where it allows you to draw five? At least if you're gonna change the card effects, keep them internally consistent. Mirror Knight Calling Magic card is in play! Kyber refers to Mirror Knight Calling as a spell. Then how would you use Ring of Destruction on it? When the Seal of Ori Calcos took Raphael's soul for reasons after the mighty plot convenience that was if you beat the darkness in your heart the seal won't take your soul 
even though plenty of innocent people's souls have been taken over the course of the show. Four kids decided to make the executive decision to paint over Raphael's eyes. They're originally supposed to be just pure white, but they deemed that too graphic for my childlike mind. And they did a real shitty job at painting over them. Darts then reveals that it was him all along. He was the reason all those bad things happened to his henchmen. Does that mean that he changed how gravity worked for Raphael? And I have the perfect foursome in mind for the job. They left in the word foursome, but they add fart noises to punches. Can they at least be consistent with their censorship? Please tell me you have the card I gave you. It was really nice and convenient of Pegasus' soul to be able to stand there long enough to explain to Yami how he was going to win. Yes, I should have warned ya. Whenever I'm about to lose, I draw exactly what I need. This can be applied to every main character of this series. The best thing to come out of this season was definitely this scene right here. Only if destroying an innocent soul concerns you. Nah. As the president of a major corporation, I have to do that every day. Oh look, it's Shakuomon. What if these dragons aren't dragons at all? What if they're humans? Humans? Oh no, one too many trips to baddragon.com. I must surrender my soul. It's my fate. Why is the Pharaoh all of a sudden starting to be swayed by darts to give up? Didn't we already go through this whole thing with fighting the spirits in the valley? Darts even said that Yami stopped the end of the world once. Somewhat foreshadowing for the next season. There really is no reason for him to be like this. We know that darts is the bad guy. He was the evil king. He said it himself. Why do you keep going? What if I was the evil one? Because you're clearly fucking not. And we all know this. Did Atlantis have Brooklyn accents too? Why does the knight Critias have Joey's color hair and Hermos have Kaiba's? Wouldn't it make sense to have it inversed? Because they look like the characters that are using them. It's not like they're trying to hide it. It's very blatant that Tamias looks like Yugi, Hermos looks like Joey, and Critias looks like Kaiba. So why swap the hair colors? Writing 101. You shouldn't build up your main villain's boss monster have infinite power. How do you expect your heroes to beat it without some stupid ass poles that makes everyone's eyes roll? Kind of like when he makes his monsters attack the power of infinity plus one. It's over 6,000 miles in diameter. I guess when they said the tidal wave was 6,000 miles in diameter, they didn't realize that the Earth is only 7,900 miles. So the wave would be almost the size of the entire planet. I think they have more to worry about than just the East Coast. Now we've hit the point where they're going to do an exposition dump about what the fuck is going on. So let me get this straight. Magical space rocks have fallen to the Earth, which allowed Atlantis to become super advanced at technology. A heterochromic twink becomes evil, and then his wife gets turned into a furry. This leads to the destruction of Atlantis, and somehow ancient Egypt as well. Three knights that don't look like Joey, Yugi, and Kaiba are turned into dragons in an attempt to stop them from stopping the twink. But all this really does is allow them to do magic bullshit and fuse with other monsters. So good job with that one. You really did it there. The magic space rocks cause our world in a parallel dimension, that's the dual monsters world, to merge. So the reincarnation of the Pharaoh, who somehow reincarnated even though his soul is still on Earth, trapped in the puzzle, must stop the twink in a card game made by a one-eyed gay man who wants to diddle a teen CEO's brother 10,000 years later. All the while, a giant tidal wave is about to hit the East Coast. This tidal wave is 6,000 miles in diameter. So you're telling me it's almost the size of the Earth. And they're only worried about it hitting the East Coast and not engulfing everything. All hope seems lost when the giant pants python is summoned and its power is infinity. But don't worry, the pharaoh calls on his friends and the use of the power of friendship decides, well, my knight has the power of infinity plus one, and defeats the pants python. So Yugi fully defeats darts by yelling at the sky that he has friends, and magically the tidal wave goes away. Then they spend the rest of the episode flashbacking the whole season, again! I can't believe they did this a second time in a fucking row. Could they not come up with a good final episode? It's bad enough they blue balled us last time with the Joey vs. Yugi rematch. 